Hi there, in this video we are going to talk about the concept of plasma half-life of drugs and its significance in clinical practice. To start with, first of all we should know the definition of half-life. Half-life is the time required for the amount of drug in the plasma to decrease by one half of its initial concentration. It tells us the duration of action of a drug and its time of elimination, thus it helps us in making a dosage plan. Before going into further detail, first of all we should know that why we want to study half-life. So what is a doctor's objective? To cure the disease, right? So for that we need a specific drug in a specific concentration for an adequate time in order to achieve the desired effects to cure the disease. If we fail to achieve the specific concentration for an adequate time, the desired effects won't be produced and the disease won't be cured. So in fact, it is the knowledge of half-life of a drug that helps us maintain a specific concentration of a drug for an adequate time in the plasma in order to achieve our desired effects. In order to understand the concept of half-life of a drug, we will discuss two cases. The first case is that we give a single dose of drug producing a short-term effect. And the second case is that we don't want a short-term effect, rather we want a continuous effect. So for that we give either multiple doses or constant infusion. Multiple doses are usually given in case of drugs having long half-life or in case of oral doses, while constant infusion is given in case of drugs having short half-life. So first of all, we will discuss our first case that we give a single dose of drug producing a short-term effect. So we inject a single dose of drug IV. Let's say the half-life of our drug is 1 hour and we have achieved an initial concentration of 100 mg per liter in the plasma. This 100 mg per liter concentration doesn't mean that we have injected 100 mg in the blood. Whether we have given a much larger dose and to in order to achieve the concentration of 100 mg per liter in the plasma by taking into account the volume of distribution and bioavailability of our drug. So, Let's consider this flask as the plasma of our body and we have given an initial concentration of 100 mg per liter drug in the body. But the problem is that body is not a closed compartment. So we have made a hole in this flask from which the drug would can continuously eliminate. So, our initial concentration 100 won't remain 100 with time. And how much it will decrease at what time? This information will be given to us by the half-life of our drug. So, this initial 100 concentration will decrease to half in its one half-life. So, after one hour, this concentration becomes half of its initial concentration and becomes 50. So, we have plotted it in our graph that 100 becomes 50 after first half-life, which in this case is one hour. So, after another hour, this 50 reduces to half and becomes 25. So, it becomes 25 after two after a total of 2 hours and we have plotted it in our graph. After another hour, this 25 becomes half, that is 12.5 and we have plotted it in our graph. And then after another hour, this 12.5 becomes half, that is 6.25 and after another hour, it becomes another half. So, after about 7 half lives, the drug gets completely eliminated from our body. One more thing to mention that let's say the therapeutic window of our drug is from 25 to about 1050. It means that our drug would become ineffective below 25 and would become toxic above 150. 
So we can see that 25 concentration is achieved after 2 hours. It means that after 2 hours our drug would become ineffective as if there was no drug in the body. So the doctor shouldn't just be happy by giving the drug. He should know that after what time his drug would become ineffective. So here is our second case that we want a continuous therapeutic effect and we don't want the effect of our drug to de decrease. So let's say the half-life of our drug is if one day and uh, if we give a single dose then our graph would be just like the previous case except that I have written days instead of hours because half-life is one day. So if the therapeutic window is again like this then it means that our drug would become ineffective in two days and we don't want that. So what do we do? What we do is that we give another dose, a smaller dose, in order at about one day, in order to increase our concentration again to 100. So this smaller dose is called the maintenance dose as it is used to maintain our initial desired concentration. So this concentration total becomes 100. And it will, it will decrease to again half after another half-life. And it becomes again 50. So we give a concentration of again 100 again. And so on. And a, uh, an average of a steady state concentration of 75 is achieved. Though it's a bit fluctuating. But it is within our therapeutic window. So we are fine with it. Uh, Steady state concentration is in fact that concentration at which the drug coming into the body is equal to the drug getting eliminated due to which our required desired steady concentration is achieved which in this case is nearly 75. So uh, there is another option that uh, okay the initial dose, the initial dose that we gave in order to attain the steady state concentration instantly is called the loading dose. And the subsequent doses are called the maintenance dose. There is another option that we don't give the loading dose because sometimes the loading dose can cause toxicity. So, in that case, again, the steady state concentration would be achieved but it would take some time to achieve that is four to five half lives so our graph would be like this as we you can see that we have given an initial concentration of 50 and it becomes half of 50 after first half life then we give another 50 then it becomes total of 75 and half of 75 after another half life then we give another 50 and so on and then graph becomes uh, straight as we can see the average like would be like this and steady state would be achieved after four to five half lives then a question comes that how to determine that what dose should we give in order to achieve our desired concentrations desired steady state concentration this question is answered by the formula dosing rate is equal to target concentration into clearance divided by bioavailability. Remember that bioavailability is always one in case of IV doses. So you might think that I am telling you the significance of half-life and there is no half-life in this formula. But in fact it is in hidden inside this clearance. Because clearance is equal to 0.693 into volume of distribution divided by half-life of our drug. So what did half-life tell us? That it helped us in determining the dosage regime. That what dose should we give at what time in order to attain our desired steady state concentration in the plasma. Now let's come to the second part of our case that again we want a continuous therapeutic effect but this time the half-life of our drug is just one minute 
This one minute means that after seven minutes, our drug would get completely eliminated from the body, as if there was no drug in the body. And after two to three minutes, we will need to give another dose. So this is quite inconvenient for us. So what we do is that we give continuous infusion in order to maintain a steady state. So we'll draw our graph here, and let's say that this flask is our plasma. and we are giving a continuous infusion at a rate of 70 mg per minute and again the problem is that there is also continuous elimination so this 70 mg per minute won't lead to a 70 mg concentration in the plasma rather we will attain a slightly lesser concentration in the plasma so what concentration we will attain let's see that after 1 minute we have achieved a concentration of 50 mg per liter in the plasma so we have plotted it here that after 1 minute we have achieved a concentration of 50 now you might think that this is wrong because previously we say that we said that um concentration reduces to half after 1 minute so 100 reduces reduced to 50 but this time 70 is reduced to 50 it is because this time we are giving a continuous infusion and in the whole time of 1 minute we are giving continuously a total concentration of 70 mg per minute so the first drop that we gave has passed 1 minute and reduced to 50 but the last drop from this 70 mg just before we have reached 1 minute the drop that we gave here is nearly full so that's why the whole drug doesn't reduce to half rather it is slightly greater than half after one half life so by 70 we achieve 50 in the plasma so uh, let's see now that what concentration we will achieve at uh, when another half life has passed at this point so what should happen is that this 50 should reduce to half because this drug is already in the plasma so it will reduce to 25 and an additional 50 should be added from this continuous infusion so this 50 reduces to half and an additional 50 gets added leading to a total of 75 and we have plotted it in the graph then after 3 minutes this 75 reduces to half and an additional 50 leading to a total of 87.5 concentration then after another half life this 87.5 reduces to half and an additional 50 leading to 93.75 after another half life this 93.75 reduces to half and an additional 50 added from this 70 leading to a total of 96.5 thus ultimately uh, 50 gets eliminated and 50 gets added and total concentration remains 100 which is a constant so after 4 to 5 half lives we have achieved a nearly 100 steady state concentration so what did half life tell us that after 3.3 half lives 90% of steady state is achieved and after 4 to 5 half lives steady state is achieved one more thing to mention that dosing rate is directly proportional to steady state concentration here we can see that dosing rate is 70 mg per minute if we increase the dosing rate again the steady state concentration would be achieved after 4 to 5 half lives but the steady state concentration would increase to a higher level as it is directly proportional to the dosing rate and our graph would go like this so one more question what will happen if we stop the infusion again what should happen is that as we saw in the first case after one half life 100 concentration would reduce to 50 after another minute 50 reduced to 25 and so on until after 7 minutes our drug would get completely eliminated just as we saw in the first case that now in this case what will happen is that our graph was like this and when we stop the infusion our graph would go like this so here is the summary you can just pause it and read it 
The only thing I want to mention here is that interval between separate doses should not be less than 4 half lives. This is not the case for maintenance dose, rather it is for separate doses. As we can see in the first case, that uh, if we gave a drug before 4 to 5 half lives, a uh, quite amount of drug is already present from the previous dose which we gave. So if we gave another 100 here, then our cons or here, our concentration would become quite greater than 100 and it will, could lead to toxicity. Try doing some questions for practice. And the sources are Lippincott and Katzen. Hope you understood and thanks for watching. Please give us some feedback and if you like it, click the like button and share this video with your friends. Thank you.